I've been juggling motherhood with my career since I was just 17 years old. But fast forward 20 years and I've learned so much about myself, both as a mother of four and an entrepreneur. When I fell pregnant at 17, I left school without any qualifications or any direction. I'd been expelled, I had no money. I knew that if I didn't make a change, I'd just be another statistic, another number, another person to rely on benefits. My personal journey to success has not been completely conventional. I did everything backwards and I'm proof that there's no real right or wrong way to do it. Just an easier way. I chose the hardest way. As I said, I fell pregnant at 16 without any qualifications. And after I had my little girl, Caitlin, at 17, reality set in. And it dawned on me that as I sat in my cold, dark living room after the electricity had run out and you topped up with a card in them days, I didn't have no money to go and buy a card. I really had to make a change. No one was going to turn my life around except me. That was my lightning bolt moment. I got a job as a secretary and I worked nine to five every day. And then I went back to reset my GCSEs before going on to study a business and management degree in night school. It was constant and it was really difficult as a single mother to a young baby. But all of those long hours, the blood, the sweat, the tears were for a better life for me and my baby girl. Sacrifice is something that goes hand in hand with success. No matter what, every successful person has to sacrifice something at one time or another. But Caitlin understands that. She understands that mummy was working hard to give her a better life and a life that she would not have been able to have unless I would have worked so hard. I've always been interested in beauty and I bought my first beauty salon at 21 before going on to own a string of salons across Liverpool. It was great while it lasted, but I knew I wanted more. And my next venture was where I really came into my own. Back in 2004, I went to Liverpool's Heritage Market, found the owner, who at the time was a man from London who'd done Camden Market. His name was in lights. I asked him for a job and he told me I couldn't have one. He told me to go away. Being a scouser, I went back, didn't I? Every day I knocked on that door until in the end he went, take a seat, you've got a job. Just so I'd leave him alone. I loved it. Every day I was taking on more and more responsibility. My boss ended up stepping away a lot from the managerial jobs. And before I knew it, I was effectively running the place. And when he left, I was invited to down to London to meet the owners where they presented plans for the site and was put in charge of the entire heritage market. When it first started, it was laden with counterfeit. All five foot two of me had to stop the market traders from getting onto that site. If their business was worth millions, put a manager. I've always been determined and unafraid to speak my mind. By the end of my time there, it was thriving with hundreds of market traders making a living. And with the market being weekends only, I identified a huge opportunity and a way to make thousands of pounds, not only for my business, but for the whole of the city. It was historic, huge and filled with character. And so I pitched it out to as many film location producers that I could. And before I knew it, multiple BBC dramas were filmed there, as well as Captain America and Sherlock Holmes, Hollywood blockbusters. I was looking out my window and seeing Jude Law walk past. That doesn't happen every day. The, I had to leave the heritage because we were making way for redevelopment of the 10th Street. I was absolutely gutted leaving, but I was ready for the next chapter in my life. I'd learned so much about myself, leadership, strategy, planning, innovation, and being creative. Part of being successful in business is having the ability to adapt and grow and try new things and be open to change. Since then, I've embarked on a new journey and I now own the Sands and Complex in Anfield, which was the birthplace of Liverpool Football Club. After investing into the venue and improving the hospitality suites and bars, I created a 130-bed hotel. I've secured the complex as an official hospitality partner of LFC. And before COVID took hold last year, that was proven to be mega successful. 
It's been the toughest year in business because of the pandemic and multiple lockdowns, as well as the intensity of restrictions, which has made it incredibly difficult for me to trade. At the beginning of lockdown, I promised my staff that I would do anything not to make them redundant. And I'm proud to say that I've kept that promise. Despite how tough it's been for me personally, I've carried a tremendous weight of keeping them all employed as I value them so much. I know that each and every one of them has families to feed, to provide for, bills to pay, a roof to keep over the head. And I've done absolutely everything I possibly could to support them during this time. When the hospitality sector was able to reopen in July, I kept the sand and doors closed. We're a match day pub with a place everyone comes to visit before and after the game from around the world. Without fans being allowed in stadiums, it was really not feasible for me to open the doors. <sighs> Behind the scenes, I was working on a food menu. And in September, I reopened the doors as a restaurant and pub. Only for the government to announce the very next day that cases of COVID was rising in Liverpool. We went into tier three restrictions, which meant I had to close the doors again. <sighs> A full lockdown was announced and since then we've just kept them closed. It's been devastating, particularly because Liverpool Football Club won the Premier League title this year for the first time in 30 years. Usually the complex would be brimming with people. It would have the most electric atmosphere that anywhere in the world has ever felt. That night in June, it was soulless. I really feel for each and every hospitality business and all of the other industries, including beauty, taxi drivers, event suppliers, photographers, the list goes on and on. These people's livelihoods and careers that they've built so many over so many years have suffered during this tragic time. I've not got through the lockdown without any of my personal challenges. I've suffered with my mental health for years. And when I went into lockdown and it hit me, my business was closed. I went from having a crazy busy life to being cooped in the house all day long. And it really got to me. My, re my depression returned thick and fast. But as a mother and a businesswoman, each day I picked myself up, dusted myself off and fought for another day. That's the thing with mental health, struggles and depression come. You can be on multiple TV news channels speaking out and fighting for business community, but inside, you're completely empty. I have my dark days and down days, but other days I feel energetic and really positive, so definitely take the good with the bad. Life isn't about being rosy and perfect all the time. The reality is that everyone struggles at one time or another, and I know there will be so many people fighting a mental health battle right now and my message to them would be, please don't be ashamed or feel like you can't talk about it openly. When we have a cut, we cover it with a plaster. Or if we have a chest infection, we visit the doctors and ask them for antibiotics. If you need to take care of your mind and to give it some TLC, that's completely normal, especially during a worldwide pandemic. It's okay to not be okay. I'm hoping that once the pandemic has passed and the virus is more manageable, we can all get down to business, back to our busy lives and doing what we do best. I can't wait to see the Sandin and every other hospitality business filled with people and buzzing atmosphere like it should be. Lockdown hasn't been entirely awful though, as my other business, Vitality Homes, which provides support at living for vulnerable people, has absolutely flourished. We've been able to help those most in need and give them 24 hour support through our brilliant program that focuses on art, sports, culture, and it encourages everyone to be the best version of themselves and even better. Lockdown was a really intense and stressful situation for anyone. But for someone who was previously being an addict, it can be especially difficult. And I'm so proud to have been able to help these people turn their lives around and be happier and healthier. Before the pandemic, 2019 was an incredible year for myself. I officially opened the Sandin Hotel with LFC legend, Jamie Carragher. 
I won Business Woman of the Year at the Enterprise Vision Awards, and I appeared on a Channel 4 show called The Secret Teacher. I was interviewed on This Morning, radio stations, BBC, along with my new apprentice from this show, Zane. The Secret Teacher was an amazing experience. I had to go undercover as a teaching assistant in Sheffield so that I didn't know anyone and no one could identify me. But it meant leaving my own four children and my businesses for days at a time to travel to Sheffield and film and took 14 weeks in total. It was really challenging, but so rewarding. And while I enjoyed getting to know all of the kids, two of them struck me and really got me going. They reminded me of myself in different ways. One of them was a 16-year-old girl called Molly who had lost her way and lost drive. She had often missed school and during filament, I went to her house personally, talked to her of the importance of education and convinced her to start attending more regularly. I also helped her secure an apprenticeship at a nearby beauty salon. The second was Zayn, who was also 16 and already showing true entrepreneurship. He was innovative and always thinking outside of the box as well as being really confident. I offered him a chance to come and work for me when he finishes his education and he passes all of his exams. I'm really looking forward to that being possible once we're through the pandemic and things can return to normal. In my career, I've changed direction. I've learned, I've adapted, I've grown, I've failed. And each and every venture has led me to where I am today. But despite all of the change, one thing that has remained the same, I always want to help people. After coming from an unconventional background and not having a straightforward journey to success, I want everyone to know that they can be anything that they want to be with hard work and determination and self-belief. Whether it's through mentorship, supporting new mums with the first business or budding young entrepreneurs, I've offered help to people from all different walks of life. That is my true passion. If I can give anyone a bit of support to help them reach their goals, then I will do everything in my power to do that. I might have been so lost at 17, but fast forward 20 years later, I'm an award winner, successful entrepreneur, a proud mother of four, but I'm also so much more.